Hi, I'm Juliana Schwab, and I'm the CCO of Silly Kids, and you are watching Eye on Business. I'm Kevin McDonald. I'm the producer and host of Facets Television and Ion Business. And today, I want to tell you about the Orange County Crime Stoppers second annual golf tournament. The tournament begins on Monday, March 17th, 2014 at 12.30 p.m. at the Oak Creek Golf Course. And we hope you'll come out and support them. Orange County Crime Stoppers is an amazing nonprofit. They're doing work to prevent crime and make us all safer. I hope you'll go. Hi, I'm Cecily Kellen, and I'm part of the crew here at Ion Productions. Thanks for watching our shows. My favorite is innovation segment. What's yours? Welcome to Eye on Business and our innovation segment where we look at innovative companies, innovative products, and the innovative people that run those businesses. Today we are very fortunate to have with us Doug Pennington and Bill Waldo. And they're going to help us explore the entrepreneur ecosystem in Orange County. So we're going to be asking about the entrepreneur perspective, the investor perspective, and the mentor perspective. So gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy to be here. Yeah, thanks, and uh, thanks. maybe the first question here is, uh, what's your perception of how our Orange County ecosystem is doing as far as entrepreneurs? Uh, what What are we doing well? What are we not doing so well? Well, doing well is it's the investors are coming back into the marketplace and okay. being away for quite a while. Yes. Uh, what we're not doing so well, uh, not to get too much in the negative, is perhaps training the entrepreneurs and how okay. to talk to us. If okay. there's a weakness that I see over and over again. It's uh, the inability to cohesively and, and coherently put together a presentation package okay. that conveys their opportunity um, and actually finances. Correct. Most of the time, these guys don't have a, an understanding at all of finance. Okay. okay, And that's a big concern for an investor. Okay. Bill, how's it look to you? Well, and I concur with Doug's comments. The money is there, unlike the past few years. The investors are there, and, and it's just a matter of education. Uh, we see a lot of early stage entrepreneurs that, that have a lot of potential, but they need more education, and, and okay. that's what we found. Um, they, to Doug's point, their, their investor presentation, how much money they really need versus what they think they need, is okay. usually a surprise. And, okay. and we spend a lot of time trying <laughs> to help with that. Well, and, and even understanding the financial concepts. Correct. We have lots of people with great ideas. But they, I ha I'll use an example. The fellow said, well, we're offering a convertible preferred. And we were a little confused, given the context of this presentation. Why? And he said, well, it's because my CPA told me to say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's not what I want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I can see maybe why that might be the case. So what do you think we ought to be doing different? I mean, uh, how should we go about solving the problems that you guys have identified? Is there any, either of your organizations could do to play a role? Honestly? Tech Coast Angels has got an excellent program for teaching and mentoring and, and ushering uh, people through their particular ecosystem uh, over there. We run a program called CEO Top Gun. We okay. require all companies to go through that to okay. learn how to talk to a, um, to a presenting company. Okay. But as I said, I have two groups. So another group, it's probably a little higher end guys who have been more polished. But uh, without mentioning a name of a man who ran <laughs> one of the largest tech companies in the world, I will tell you that when he was in front of us, last summer Scully. he did a horrible job <laughs> and they left chunks out of their presentation and, and we were sitting in the room going boy even these guys need to be trained <laughs> good so point. Very good point. so what's uh, this program that uh, doug's referring to well we have a couple of them uh one of them is tritic yep. uh, okay. is, was okay. an organization that's actually funded by the small business administration and it's designed to help early stage companies become what we call okay. investor ready uh, and we've also got a couple of accelerators that we use that are short-term okay. incubator-type okay. concepts 
And but the, the TriTech one I'm particularly involved in, and we really do spend a lot of time trying to help the entrepreneurs understand the whole fundraising process. Okay, all right. Yeah. So let's go a little deeper here. Um, the entrepreneurs need this help. They're not ready. Um, if you guys get your hands on them through one program or another, how long does it take to get them ready? That's that's a very well. I'm <laughs> yeah, that's all over the board. It depends on how much traction they already have. And you're okay. assuming they're going to listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if they, if to answer your question, if they have traction and they're past the dream stage and they actually yep. have a prototype where they have what we call a minimum viable product, yep. then probably around 90 to 120 days. Okay, somewhere okay. in that range is realistic. Okay. Yeah. Now, Doug, you said if they listen to us. What's the percentage? Uh, how many do? How many don't? Well, I think Bill can attest to this. We've been doing this long enough that I could have three companies stand in front of me, run them through our training program, and of those three, maybe one will actually follow our format. Okay. And invariably, time after time again, yes. they come out of left field with something you never even heard about, uh, or the numbers change, or whatever. And, and that's... Candidly, that's one of the real issues, okay. you know, because you only have so much time to talk to us. Right. So it's a little like dating. You've got to make your impression as quick as good impression as quick as possible uh, before you move on. And then, you know, it's it's being able to understand what we're looking for. Well, let's go to that for a second. So, what are the two or three most common mistakes you see companies making, Bill? What What's I mean, your sense? A good, good question. Yeah. Uh, and I'll, I'm going to give you kind of a different response, but I think it'll address your question. Okay. One of the things that we have learned and we now preach on a regular basis with these uh, with the entrepreneurs is what investors are really looking for. Okay. In other words, if, if, if once they get the product and the investor likes the product, he immediately shifts. And we call it, the investor has to really like the horse, okay. but he's got to be madly in love with the jockeys. Okay. Right. And that's, that's, the, okay. that's the entrepreneurs and it's the team, it's the people that we're going to write a check for and invest in. Yeah. And, and that's the real education there is people have to understand it's all about the management team that, that's going to, to uh, create the investment. Yeah. What do you think we need to be do doing different to get the mirror up in front of the entrepreneurs? Because everyone comes to any of these organizations, whether it's Pacific Coast Network or Tech Coast Angels, and says, you know, I'm ready and I'm passionate and I've got a good idea. Um, how do we help them know that, well, yeah, but here's where the gaps are? Tough love. Okay. Tough lips. Speak, speak bluntly. I, I was uh, fortunate enough uh, as a guest of Bill's to attend one of their screening sessions. And what I particularly liked was that there was no, no holds bar comments okay. on what the guys did. Okay. And I think that is invar you know, invaluable to okay. a young company. Okay. And they got to listen. Okay. I mean, they get in front of me and they make one mistake, they've lost me. Okay. It isn't that I don't have a backlog of deals. I mean, they're okay. just one of hundreds that come walking through the door. I hate to put it, sound like I'm putting them down. No, yeah. But you only get one shot to win me over. Okay. Okay. And so it's, we're giving you our time, our effort, and our knowledge. I mean, I've been doing this, what, 17 years? Yes. Bill, you've been about the same? Mm -hmm. I mean, we know what works with the people that we're in, you know, with our friends and with our group. And invariably, these guys either do it, and they've got a, quite a success okay. rate. Okay. Um, or they don't, and they shoot themselves in the foot. And then they want to come back and try and make up, and it doesn't happen. So, Bill, if I can ask you, what are some examples of tough love? What would be a typical <coughs> dose of tough love coming from one of the meetings? It would be, typically, it's, it's someone that's not prepared. Okay. They're just, okay. they're, they're not a good speaker. Okay. Or he's, uh, and, and I mean this, <laughs> typically what we want to have is the CEO. Okay. Present. Yeah. And, and, and if the engineer or the CTO is presenting, he is not going to put on the same type of presentation. Okay. And it's critical that we as investors see who the real management team is. Yeah. And okay. oftentimes, the, they're not clear on that and okay. they, they don't articulate the message properly. And it's unfortunate because a lot of times they have a very good product, okay. but they're not okay. delivering the message. The other part is entrepreneurs typically are out looking for money. But in reality, they need more than just money. They need an individual that's got uh, domain knowledge that can not only write a check, but also be a participant in their company and help them build their business. So what I'm hearing is you've got to do more than give them the money. You've got to give them the money and something. What, what are some other examples of yeah. the something? Well, they... mentoring. What mentoring. Bill's alluding to is Absolutely. mentoring. Okay. Um, you know, I always say there's three types of investors. The guy writes you a check and says, I'll see you in a couple of months or you know, give me a quarterly update. The other fellow is like, here's my check, here's my Rolodex, let me help you grow your business. 
And the third, which could be dangerous, is here's my check, where's my desk? I'm going to get into your <laughs> office. Yep. I'm going to be with you all the time. And that can be good or bad, but I will tell you invariably that, and this is maybe a weakness on the investor side, yeah. that I see too many guys who write checks and walk away. And then they wonder why the deal goes south. And whereas, mm -hmm. Uh, and most of these folks are fairly young who stand in front of our room, are very inexperienced. Okay. They've never run a business right. before. And so they really need the hands-on approach. Okay. Uh, I can't begin to tell you the first thing about a biotech company, but I can tell you how to run a company. Right, right. Right. So if you want to be the guy who create the new product, great. But you may not be the guy who builds a corporation. Okay. Okay. Well, well put. Very well put. So if we were looking at ourselves as people trying to help the entrepreneurs, what might we critique our people on? What do we need to be doing differently? Another good question. I'll start off with that one. What we need to be doing more of is is the mentoring. Okay. It's it's once you write a check, that's 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 the first step. But if the 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 angels have got to have some members that are actually going to engage with the company. Okay. It's okay. it's being involved with them to help them survive <coughs> once you help put them in the business. Okay. And we need to do a better job at, at having people with relative experience that can really get involved with them and help them build their business and stay with them and, okay. and, and keep us uh, all informed. And for an investor, that's our insurance policy. If we can have one of our members yeah. Yeah. In, uh, involved in sitting on the yep. board and, but not sitting at the desk all day long, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> helping them, uh, it's, it's, it's our best insurance policy. You know, and I can't even augment that. What he just said is absolutely right. Uh, going down the line, if there's a weakness that we have, it's that. Okay. Is that too many of the fellows in, in our world write checks and walk away okay. and then wonder why it, why something went south. And the companies, quite frankly, really do need, they need the help. They need it. Sometimes they don't understand yep. that they need it, okay? But invariably, if they do participate and become, you know, active in that process, as, as Bill articulated, it blossoms. Blossoms on both sides of the desk. So going forward, are there any new initiatives, uh, either um, already underway or on the planning boards that you'd like to tell our listening audience about that uh, may be coming from either of your organizations? Well, at Tech Coast Angels, we're basically trying to reinvent ourselves. Okay, okay. And, and we're trying to make a lot of changes. We've, 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 it's a whole different world today than it was pre-meltdown, I call yeah, it, yeah, it yeah, versus yeah. today. And we're trying to get more involved with networking. We're trying to make ourselves uh, more readily available so people understand who we are and not okay. be afraid of us. And, and a better job of mentoring and, and doing the mixers and working with, uh, with a lot of the entrepreneurs to better understand the whole uh, 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 investment process, what's in, what, what it entails, and, and do an education uh, okay. process with them. And, and we're making some, some good groundwork there. Good. So far, I, I think it's, we're going in the right direction. Yeah. Tech, I know but, you're innovating too, so what's up there? Well, no, I was going to say so much what he said is so it's so very important is that it wasn't that long ago that the angel groups didn't talk to each other. Okay, they were okay. they were silos okay. of information, okay. and they just wouldn't come together in deals. And 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 that's changed. And I'm okay. going to embarrass this guy by saying a lot of it is for people like Bill, who has reached out and said, "Hey, Private Capital Network, we'd like to syndicate a deal with you." I said, "I've got one. I'd love to share with you." He said, "We'd love to see it." That didn't happen, say five okay. years oh, ago. Okay. Very good. Okay. okay, we wouldn't share. Uh, the deals are involved in. That's changed. Uh, in response to the market, Private Capital Network, we just captured the domain CEO Top Gun. That's a training program where we run people through a one day how to talk to investors. And we have pretty much a standardized presentation guideline that we've actually told guys, you've got to stick to this. Here's the 15 or so slides. You can embellish a slide a little bit, but this is how it's going to flow. Okay. Uh, if you don't follow this format, you will, you know, you will fail and the angels in heaven will weep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, sure. Or anywhere else, right? Yeah. <laughs> so one final thing here, gentlemen. Um, I know this is a little tricky with the kind of organizations you have, but how should people get in touch with either your organization or yours, Bill? With Tech Coast Angels, as a, it depends on if you're an entrepreneur. Okay. Uh, we have a website that they can go to, and it's a very robust website. It goes into a lot of detail okay. about our background, who okay. to contact, depending on what your needs are. And, and then we have a process that, that starts from the website. Now you yeah. wear another hat in addition, so uh, you're the membership chair as I understand. I am the membership chair. How should those folks get in touch with you? 
Uh, normally that occurs through networking okay. and just through right. referrals. Okay. And, right. and, and we get quite a few uh, people that apply that want to be a, uh, an angel investor. Okay. So they should get to know an existing uh, Tech Coast member then? To, to, to better understand the process. Got gotcha. yes. you. Okay. Yeah. Doug, how about you? Uh, with entrepreneurs, we go through privatecapitalnetwork.com. Okay. A big long okay. name website. Okay. Um, it is for people who want to become involved in the group, there's actually two groups, as you know. There's one group that's private capital network, and that's what I jokingly okay. call the ordinary millionaires. <laughs> uh -oh. And then a few years ago, my friend Bill gave me a wonderful idea for a whole new organization. It gives me way too much credit. And uh, it was called the, the PC and Archangels, which is a brand new California corporation. Yeah, as of when? As of about. 12 hours ago. So you heard it here <laughs> first, folks. <laughs> so uh, we don't have a website yet uh, okay. or a business card or even a secret handshake. <laughs> okay. uh, but that's for the much higher net worth guys. And we simply look at much larger deals. These are people that are okay. looking for $5 million on up. All right. uh, and we've had people from John Scully to Harry Winston, okay. uh, the jewelers, in our room to talk to us about their needs. So it's a little different organization. Okay, so I really appreciate you gentlemen coming on the show. Bill, thanks for coming. Thank good you. Good to see you us. again. Happy Doug, nice to finally Thank meet you. you and good luck with everything and especially the new organization as Thank of you. whatever it is yeah. this Long morning. Hours ago. <laughs> Twelve hours ago. <laughs> you have been watching Ion Business, the innovation segment, and today's guests have been Doug Pennington of Private Capital Network and Bill Waldo of Orange County Tech Coast Angels. Thank you for watching. Hi, I'm Brandon McNeil, cameraman for Facets TV, the Ask Dino Show, and the Innovation segment. And thanks for watching Ion Productions. Welcome, I'm Kevin McDonald, and you're watching Ion Business. Tonight with me is Diane Buckley Altweiss with Core Performance Concepts. And I want to thank you for coming in thank tonight. You. Thank you so much. So, um, First of all, let me, for the audience, so we understand who we're talking to, okay. give me a little bit of background on, on your company. Well, um, Core Performance Concepts, we are a training and curriculum provider. We focus on giving training and curriculum to universities and corporations around the country and actually around the world. Uh, we focus in the areas of project management, process improvement, business analysis. It's basically all of the activities in an organization that actually execute on strategy. So we want to make the people more effective. So when you say you do training, do you actually produce the training and deliver it? Do you produce training and hand it off to other people that deliver it? What's your model? Um, yes, actually, okay. all of it, all of the above. Um, we have about 90 different courses that we have developed ourselves. We're project management experts, and uh, we will license those materials out to other training organizations or universities, and we also deliver the courses as well. So those that are just uh, the average folks in the audience, I mean, Project management sounds like a stuffy term, so break it down for me why project management is important to the world. Um, well, project management is basically about um, organizing the work to be done for an organization. So if you think about corporations, they want to grow, they want to um, get more revenues, they want to increase their business. Everything they do to grow that business is a project. So every project in an organization needs to be orchestrated well. Um, there's a lots of opportunity for inefficiencies in an organization, and project management tries to have some metho methodology with regard to successfully delivering those yeah. projects. So having seen the difference between good project management and bad project management in my world in IT and compliance, mm. um, I, I can say that stopping people from living through tyranny of the urgent seems to be one of the <laughs> fundamentals, right? Right. How do you fight the politics of oh. an executive that has unrealistic expectations in a project? Oh, that's a great question. Um, a lot of it comes down to, and, and again, there's good project managers in this world and there's bad project managers. Mm -hmm. um, I would categorize good project managers are ones that absolutely understand what the organization is trying to achieve. And you have to always put it in terms of that corporation and their vision. So they have to be able to be political. They have to be able to influence and find ways to get people to agree on what they're going to deliver and make sure it's successful. There's times when you have to kind of break up a project into several phases, but define those phases and then deliver successfully on each of them. So project manager really has to be very political in their own organization. So there's a line of dependency in project management that, that seems to me to be one of the biggest challenges. So let's say we have a team of 10 people and there's a project that involves dependency. So in, before mm -hmm. Joe does his job, Jane can't do her job. Right. And, and you may not even have any real power over that person other than the word you used, influence. Mm -hmm. So what, 
what tools do you use to influence that person to making sure they meet their dependencies? And then what do you do if they don't? Mm -hmm. Um, well, we'll talk about the first one first, is how do you get people to kind of go along with you? Um, I look at project managers as leaders in an organization. And just like any CEO or CIO, you, the people in the organization want to follow somebody. And there has to be a reason to follow you. So you have to be trustworthy, and you have to be honest with them, and you have to help them. Um, I also look at project managers as teachers. So they have to kind of help people along. So your job as a project manager is to get rid of barriers, allow the people to be successful, and this way you're influencing them because you're doing something to help them. And if you're doing something to help them, they tend to want to help you. So it's really, um, it's about team building. It really is about team building and how you build that trust because nobody's going to follow if you have, don't have any trust. If you fail in the dependency um, and there's a sudden urgency, I know that the really good project managers that I've dealt with over the years are as much miracle troubleshooters as they are <laughs> managers. Right. So what type of person, I mean, it really does take a certain type of person. It's leadership partially, but it's mm -hmm. also that MacGyver who can work through the failures. Give me a little bit of an idea of if I'm looking for a project manager, what type of personality traits should I be looking um, for? Well, I have like eight different things that I usually look for, but I'll maybe talk about three of them. One That'd is um, you've got to be an action-oriented person. Um, you can't sit back and just assume everything's going to happen. You put a plan together, so now everything's just going to happen according mm -hmm. to that plan. That's just never not, not never going to happen. Yep. So you have to be action-oriented. You have to know the critical tasks on your project and make sure that those are getting every opportunity to succeed. So action-oriented, don't sit back and just let issues happen. Be very proactive. Uh, the second thing is that what I said earlier about vision. If you don't understand what the value of that project that you're leading has to the organization, nobody else will understand it. So if I was hiring project managers, I want to make sure that they understand what is this project bringing to the organization? Is it a new product? Is it additional revenues? Is it cost reduction? Because that's what's built into the overall strategy of an organization. What happens if the project manager is trying to get that vision and they find that there's three people in a room leading the vision and the vision doesn't agree? How do you work through the politics of that? Oh, well, that, I guess that depends. I have a saying the best answer to every project management question is it depends. Right. Um, <laughs> well, that's a good one. It certainly makes it more open-ended. It, huh? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it just depends on the situation. So right. if I'm dealing with um, a group of people, and it depends on their role, mm -hmm. that aren't agreeing on which direction you need to take, I go back to whatever that vision is. What are we, what are we trying to accomplish, and how does it tie to the overall strategy of an organization? And try to gain consensus on, do you guys agree with this, are we trying to increase revenues by 10%? So if we're trying to increase revenues by 10% with this project, then we have to kind of step back and say, okay, how are we going to get there? And work through, have the discussion. It's, you, know, you can't just sit back and let the discussions happen without you. So with that said, do you, do you try to pull the visionaries out of the minutia completely? Because it seems to me there's a challenge. If you pull them out of the minutia completely, you get an end result and they go, that's not what I wanted. No. But if you no. let them get down into the weeds, now they can interfere with what are the basic functions of getting things done. I don't find executives to be really good at getting involved in the minutia. So how do you help draw that line? Is that part of your role is to help draw the line of where well, the I vision think stops and the minutia begins? <laughs> yeah, there's different levels. So you've got that vision and that, you know, that beautiful shiny star that we're all working mm -hmm. toward. But then you have more um, specific objectives, very measurable things. Mm -hmm. So if we do these three things, we'll have taken the step towards that star. Right. So you get that agreement at the senior level saying that these are the three things we're going to get measured by that are very concrete. Mm -hmm. And you know we've delivered a website, and it has 5,000 products on it, and it's being ranked on uh, Google searches in the top 10% type of thing. Mm -hmm. That's what those objectives might be. And then you, then the senior management can kind of go off to the side, and then we would work towards that. There's a disconnect in a lot of companies that I see where the project manager and maybe the team leads that next layer down 
don't really push for those objectives. They get they get buried in the minutia. Right. So not that the senior management needs to pu be pulled out. The detailed project managers need to be pulled out too. Right. So that's where I, I say one of the skills that you really need in a good project manager is somebody that does think about that. To remain visionary, does think right. about the objectives and make sure that we're not removing scope that's going to affect the achievement of those objectives. Mm -hmm. That fear it seems to me that project managers are often resisted by the smarts. And I mean the smarts, the ones that think they're geniuses, many of them are. But they may or may not understand that having leadership mm -hmm. doesn't mean they're beneath or right, below that right. individual. How do you manage those personalities? Because I think in my experience as an executive, managing people that are smarter than I am mm -hmm. on the things that I expect them to be smarter than I am on are the most difficult because they just want me to do what they say rather than to have input in their process. Um, right? I know exactly. I, I, I can visualize a couple people <laughs> okay. right there. Um, it's a kind of a funny story where there is a gentleman that I've been working with over the years and he's one of those very intelligent individuals mm -hmm. and if you understand that good communication is where I might talk and then you kind of respond and then we confirm that we understand, every time that I would repeat myself, he's like, you don't need to repeat yourself. You know, so I finally learned that with that kind of personality, and everybody's different and you got to learn the personalities, is never ever confront him in a group. Right. Ever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Egos um, will win. Yeah. Eagles, eagle, egos will cause trouble right. in the long run for you. Mm -hmm. But always ask questions of that person. Don't ever tell them what to do. Yep. Ask them questions, let them figure it out on their own, and then they're heroes. Okay. So you just kind of pose more questions. But it's a personality thing, so there's sure. lots of ways you identify various types of personalities on your projects. Do you and use learn. any tools like Myers-Briggs, for example? Um, I have used Myers-Briggs in okay. the past, and then the disk profiles. All of those tools give you a little bit of a different insight into right. the individuals, which right. is actually kind of fun to do. Okay. So, hey, I want to thank you for coming in. I want to give you a second. So, for folks that, that might want to reach out to you, how do they reach you and, and look at the camera over there? And okay. Tell us how they can get in touch with you. Um, well, you can contact us at info, info at cpconcepts.net is our email address, or our website is coreperformanceconcepts.com. Thank you so much for thank coming in. Thank you very in. much. Thank you so much. I'm Kevin McDonald. You've been watching Ion Business, and with me tonight has been Diane Buckley Altwice with Core Performance Concepts. You can reach us at ionproductions.com, or you can write directly to me at crimetalkjustice.com or practicallyinvisible.com. We hope you'll come back soon.